and it just completely creamed this whole side look how oh my god look what they did to you and and it, it got the fucking bumper too so how is it going guys drew peacock here back with another video and I just realized my glasses are reflective and you guys might have saw what I already installed So I'm gonna have to go ahead and uh, change my angle, but today is a pretty big day We got a new hood for the super we got a Sabon carbon fiber. I believe it's the TS style hood uh, You'll see it's it's a, it's in my opinion one of the better looking super hoods today is one of those videos where it's kind of like a little time travel video This is the future. I've already installed it. It's done right there I didn't record an intro because I just wanted to go and pick it up. Pretty much what happened was I drove out to Sabon, I picked up the hood, it didn't fit in the car, I tied it to the roof really ghettoly, and I blocked traffic for about an hour driving home, which was really fun and people were not happy about that. But uh, anyways, let me go ahead and show you guys what happened. It might be broken, we don't even know. I guess we're about to find out. The moment of truth. It looks like one piece. I don't notice any of those things. Is it light? Lighter. Alright guys, we made it back with the hood and it's in one piece still. I was a little bit worried since we strapped it to the top of the van that we might have maybe folded a corner down or the wind might have picked it up and ripped it in half, but it just looks beautiful. This is the Sabon. I'm sorry for the wind noise. This is a Sabon, I believe it's the TS style, not the TJ style. The TJ style I believe is the one with the triangles that look like the TRD hood kind of. This is the TS. I like how this one looks with the angle cut vents to really just rip out all the heat. And then it even has this little baby vent back here, which I think will help in additional to where the turbo's at and everything. So this is gonna look really good compared to the stock hood. Let me walk over here really quick. The stock hood looks good, but this one has a few minor you know, defects with it. This corner looks like it's had some work done. The hood paint just doesn't look that great. It's good, don't get me wrong, but you can see some of the body work and some lightings. And uh, we're just gonna go ahead and toss the other one on really quick and see how it lines up. Hopefully, I don't gotta do too much panel adjusting okay let, let me explain what happened so we got the hood on and it was like this for like a minute and i was so depressed because the fitment of it was like ass and then i was like well there's no way like only one latch is latching the, the super hoods are dual latched a little uh, backstory anyways so i was over here and i was like fucking it a little bit and uh eventually i got it to latch so i got to just adjust the latch itself and we'll be okay. And then we just gotta fix this nasty gap. And then and then it'll be okay. So do you approve of the hood? Yep. She said yep. All right, back to present day. Let me go ahead and show you guys the hood, how it sits now. I went ahead and I got it pretty much 90% snug all the way around. There's one area that I cannot close the gap on. And if there's a little gap right here, I mean, it's tiny. You know, you can kind of like barely put your finger in it. It's a tiny gap. It's a lot better than it was when I first tossed it on. Surprisingly, the fit was pretty good already. Now, my, my car before with the stock hood already had some fitment issues. This side had one hell of a gap and this side was flush. It's funny because with this hood, this side is flush and now this side has a little bit of a gap. And so that's just one thing with carbon fiber you know, components is that they're not always flush and they don't always mold the same. Now, the way it looks is only half of the story. What's the point of having something that looks cool and looks aggressive if it doesn't do anything? Well, this one does do stuff. If we go and we look on the rear side, these vents are all functional. The turbo's on this side, so that's why I'm guessing it gets an extra little baby vent right there. That's an extra five horsepower right there, guys. Don't, don't let that fool you. These are probably an extra 10 each. So we got 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 65 horsepower from a carbon fiber hood. I'd say that's worth the money alone. No, I'm joking. But the extra cooling factors of this will help a lot. Factory hoods are meant to work and they do trap a lot of air at the same time. 
for a car with more horsepower than factory it's smart to upgrade and especially if you're on a turbo car it is really smart to upgrade because now the air can flow right into that fucking car's mouth and out the top of its head which is great i plan on painting most of the hood and just leaving some of these fins carbon fiber i think that will look pretty sick and it'll almost look stock from a distance but again you're gonna have to take a closer look at it and notice oh god damn this is a carbon fiber hood he paint matched it it looks sick as hell wow this guy must have a huge dick one last benefit of the carbon fiber hood that I think it's important to mention is you could really hear your turbo noises. And I mean really hear your turbo noises without even trying. When I leave this stoplight, I will just cruise naturally, just normally, as if I'm just, you know, daily driving and listen to how it sounds. First gear never really sounds too impressive, but you still hear it. But second gear, oh my God. It just sounds so elegant and you can hear it a lot more without even trying. Now I'm gonna roll up my windows and just chill for a second. But honestly, I am super pleased with this hood. I've noticed that it does keep the engine bay a bit cooler before. If I went out and I was doing some racing and I did some poles and I popped the hood afterwards, you couldn't touch anything. It was fucking molten lava underneath the hood. I'm gonna park in that shade right here. But uh, now with the hood, I could pop the hood and I could actually touch some components without completely scorching my hand. So it is a noticeable difference and I, I do think it is doing something. I don't think I'm gaining 60 horsepower like I was joking about and saying earlier or whatever, but uh, <laughs> yeah, it is doing something. So I'm gonna go ahead and just cruise for a bit and uh, well, let's go back and uh, work on that lip. I'll do one more like mini pole. Just so you can hear it. it. Just sounds so good. It's so much easier to get these turbo like clips now. Like trying to make it sound cool and everything. It's so much easier. I don't have to like really try too hard. Like I'm not giving it too much gas. Yeah, I'm, I'm revving it out a little bit, but I'm revving it out to four, which is about half of my red line. So I think overall it's a win. The hood was one part of what I wanted to do today. The second part is the lip. Now, it's in the shade right now, so it looks fine. But when it's in the sun, it doesn't look black like that. It looks like a little bit of a faded gray. It's not even. It doesn't, it doesn't look that great. So I think instead of buying a new lip, since this one is fine, I'm going to go ahead and just paint it. I think a nice black paint job. Nothing too crazy. Not a high gloss, you know, perfect finish or anything like that. But if we slap some black paint on there, it'll help even out and balance the color level of it. Because, again, it looks good. But in direct sunlight, I don't know if you guys can see on camera, in direct sunlight, it does look a little bit faded. So I actually got to go to AutoZone or Home Depot or something and pick up some spray paint. So I will be right back. Let me see if I can show you guys how bad it looks. I, I think it's picking it up on camera. It just looks just like it's different colors. It looks like it's gray, black, gray, black. Like it, it's not one even color. So I got to jack up the car, remove it. This will make it look 10 times better. And then we just got to get new headlights because these are a little bit boo-boo. <laughs> All right, guys, without a lip, super looks kind of stupid. The intercooler sticks out from the bottom. So we're going to go ahead and put the, I was going to say new lip. We're going to go ahead and paint this lip. Hopefully you guys can see. I think you guys will be able to see what I'm talking about now. That lip just looks nasty. It doesn't look like one color. So we're going to go ahead and sand it, spray it, and make sure it starts to look uniform because that is fucking nasty. All right, guys, I went ahead and sanded it. I'm about to wipe it down with rubbing alcohol and then start the primer coat. Pretty even sanding. I didn't have to go too crazy. I just want to scuff it up a little bit so the primer has something to latch on to. And it should come out pretty decent. This isn't my first time painting, but we'll see. I don't want to get too ahead of myself. We're going to put on the first coat of primer. Just a light coat, just a tack coat, as they call it, just to get it so the rest of the coats have something to latch on to. You just got to make sure to show this bottle a good time for about a minute. Once you feel like it's about to burst, you're ready to spray. God, my arm. You know, you got to sometimes hit it with the double hand technique. You know, if you're really feeling wild, you could spit on it. But I'm not going to do none of that. All right. That should be good enough. Feels like she's about to, I mean, it's about to uh, pop. So 
I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see me really well. Actually, let me move your angle really quick. I'll go to this angle. But pretty much what we're going to do is test spray. Looks good. This is black primer, by the way. But we're just going to do lines. Start off of the lip. End off of the lip. It's not going to look great for your first coat. Don't expect it to look like it's ready to be slapped on the car and go to SEMA. It ain't going to be like that. Taking a closer look at it, it looks matte. It looks like it has tiger stripes. That's normal, it's the first coat. Once we spray all of the primer, we're probably gonna do a good four or so coats of primer. Once we spray all of the primer, we're gonna wet sand it and make sure it comes out really good. Since it is a super. If we were doing some for the Kia right there, I wouldn't give two shits. But already, it's already looking a lot more even. So let me go ahead and let this dry and we will come back. All right, so I just sprayed the last coat of primer. It is still wet, needs to dry, but I think it's gonna look really good once it dries. We got a nice even coat on it. First couple of coats I did vertically, and then the last couple coats I did really thick horizontal coats, and I think it's gonna look pretty even. We're gonna go ahead and wet sand this afterwards, and then we're gonna apply the actual paint. All right, guys, it looks like the primer has all dried, and I'd say that looks pretty dang good. I am going to go ahead and wet sand this still, just to make sure that the uh, paint has a nice, even surface to work with. As you can see, there's no striping or anything that I can tell right off the bat, so I think that looks pretty damn good, and if there is, the wet sanding should take care of that. Okay, so I went ahead and quickly wet sanded it. It is very smooth to the touch. I'm not going to go through a bunch of different grits of sandpaper. I just wet sanded it with a thousand grit. It's a lip. It's going to take damage so it's not the end of the world and I'm not planning on keeping this one forever it'll do its job but it's no show car piece for sure so we're gonna go ahead and prep it one more time and then start spraying the paint all right we got it nice and prepped we're gonna go ahead and spray on the actual paint I'm gonna go only in horizontal lines because I noticed that when I was doing the vertical lines on it that it was leaving tiger stripes and I don't want to do tiger stripes because that looks like dog shit so I'm gonna go ahead and just pleasure this can really quick for a straight minute this is just a tack coat so I'm not gonna spray it on too thick I'm just gonna lightly hit everything this is the way I've been doing it I'm using the body lines of the piece itself to separate it so the seams if you do see anything will be in these areas and with this body line too that way you don't see a fucking seam dead center so from here I'm gonna go all the way across nice and evenly to this body line and do the same just keep the can moving if you stop you're gonna get a line and that's nasty Okay, so I just sprayed what I think will be the last coat, and that bitch looks glossy. It's it's wet. I just sprayed it, but it's not bad. I mean, that's that's pretty good for some rattle can shit. That's pretty good. So we'll see how it looks when it dries. I'm, I'm assuming it'll look similar, but a little bit less glossy. But I think it's going to look ten times better than how it did before. And that should complete the frontal look. What I plan on doing after the lip is getting some damn new headlights because those things are ugly. There's this company that I'm talking to or this place and they customize headlights. You guys will see. It's going to be insane. I don't want to spoil anything. They're not going to just be OEM replacements. They're going to be something a little bit special. So we're going to have to wait for that. It's going to take a few weeks, maybe to a month because they have to order some parts, but it'll be absolutely insane. So let's go ahead and let this paint dry and we'll throw it all back together. So a lot of you guys have been bugging me and asking, Drew, what are you going to fix the Mustang? Drew, why did you abandon the Mustang? Drew, how come ever since you got the Super, you don't give a shit about the Mustang? Neither, none of those are true. I love the Mustang. The Mustang is still my, my favorite car. I like the Supra and all, but the Mustang was more fun when I had it. The Supra's fun, but gapping people, like there's no tomorrow, and shooting flames out the rear, which this thing does too, but it, it was just a lot more of a, a unlikely and unsuspecting car. So I love that car, but that car will go into the shop next month. And I know a few of you guys will be like, Drew, how can you always send your cars into the shop? Listen, I am not a mechanic. I can do certain things, you know? I've done certain things here and there with the Supra, obviously, and I could do things here and there with the Mustang, but I do not have the equipment to pull the motor, tear apart the motor, and build a completely custom twin turbo kit. I also don't have the knowledge to break down the motor and fully inspect the motor to make sure that everything is sound. I'm trying to go for a thousand horsepower or get as close to it as I can. And on a three valve, they don't sell twin turbo kits. You gotta make it completely custom. I don't have a welder. I don't have a pipe bending tool or anything like that. I don't have what it takes to do that. So instead of wasting my time and messing up and blowing up the motor the first time it starts, I'm just gonna take it in and have someone do it for me. It's gonna take time and it's gonna take a lot of money, but it's something that I think will set the car apart 
from other three valves because how many twin turbo three valves have you seen not many if any so yes it's going to take a little bit of time and it's going to take a lot of money but at the end of the day it's going to be sick i'm going to have a one of a kind custom twin turbo three valve mustang that is going to gap all of the competition it's going to destroy the supra which will be great and then I will have a nice modest, you know, 600, 700 horsepower super at the end of the day. And that will be fun too. You know, you don't need 2,000 horsepower cars. And that's one thing that I've been trying to tell people. It's like, oh, you, people are like, oh, you should just full send the super and just make it have 1,000 horsepower and stuff like that. Just turn off the AC and it'll be 1,000 horsepower. The thing is, what are you going to do with 2,000 horsepower cars? If I'm going to go out racing, why do I need 2,000 horsepower cars? I can't drive two cars at once. I can't do anything with that. So having a you know a fast supra but that can still you know handle a canyon and stuff like 600 700 horsepower i think that will be a lot of fun in the supra and then taking the mustang out when i go to mexico and take people to gabblebees that will be a lot of fun as well so let me go ahead and let's let, let's finish letting this shit dry right here because well, it's taking a little bit longer than i thought but i want to make sure it dries completely before i start touching it and then we'll slap it on the supra and i will show you guys how it looks like i said we are going to be doing a few more things to the supra but I'm not going to paint the hood or do any of that until I go ahead and get the Mustang at least started. Get that situated because that's going to take an arm and a leg. But this car, I mean, it's coming out really good. I, I'm loving the way it is coming together. Comment down below what else you guys think I should do to it for the exterior and for looks. I don't know. I was thinking about getting, you know, carbon fiber fenders and stuff like that. But I kind of like how it looks like this. And fenders don't really weigh that much anyways. If I'm going to get anything else carbon fiber, it'll probably be a carbon fiber hatch. And maybe a carbon fiber wing and get those paint corrected as well. Because I don't want my car to look like a panda. But comment down below what you think I should get. Should I get a diffuser? Should I get a different front lip? I don't know. Let's find out. You can't even make this shit up. Same day, painted the lip. And guess what? On the freeway here in, in beautiful SoCal... We hit a fucking cone and it just completely creamed this whole side. Look how, oh my god, look what they did to you. And, and it, it got the fucking bumper too. So sorry, I'm trying to put some light on it because it's like the middle of the night. Look at that. God, you can't even make it up. It's still drying. It's still drying. I drove it home from my parents to my house and look at it. You can't make it up. This is this is kind of why I didn't buy a carbon one. Thank God. Imagine if I did. Imagine if I bought a carbon one. It would be so much worse. So let me go ahead and buff this out really quick. All right. After a quick wipe off with some wax, it looks a lot better. There's still a couple little marks, but in the morning, I will hit it with uh, something a little bit more stronger than wax, and it should be okay. The lip, the lip, I'll have to show you guys in the light. It's not going to look, you know, 100% anymore, but well, let's go inside. All right, guys, here it is in direct sunlight. It's not that bad. I haven't done anything to really polish it or try to clean it off. But it's just a little bit depressing knowing that I spent a good five hours, you know, most of it was letting it dry, but still spent a good amount of time trying to make it look nice. And it does look nice, don't get me wrong, but it's just not perfect anymore. I mean, look at this side, just so much better. And then just, it got, it got kissed. So that is in direct sunlight. Again, it's not that bad at night at a car meet or something. You're not gonna notice. And I'm happy that the bumper itself is fine. I thought all of this was gonna be paint chipped or something, but it's fine. So. It is what it is, but for now, that's gonna have to just remain as is. So anyway, guys, that's gonna have to do it for this video. The hood looks good. The front lip looked good until it was hit, but you know, shit happened. So, it, wow, my hair looks fucking stupid. Let's just focus on the super really quick because my hair looks stupid. That is gonna have to do it for this video though. Of course, it starts to get windy right as I start to record. Hopefully the wind noise isn't too bad, but like I said, the hood looks good. I love how the hood looks. It's just the front lip that could use a little bit more love imagine if I would have bought the carbon fiber lip I was debating on buying the carbon fiber lip at the same time as the carbon fiber hood that thing would be in pieces right now so that is one plus of using a polyurethane or a cheap plastic front lip and it doesn't look half bad so anyways that's gonna do it for this video if you guys enjoy the super content leave a thumbs up hit subscribe and until next video peace